Uh, the Day Shall Come, which is the latest from Chris Morris, um, about the, you know, arch uh, agent provocateur Chris Morris, about the farce at the heart of uh, American homeland security. The film is inspired by some real cases, including the case of Liberty uh, City 7, and it's a story of a bunch of renegade misfits effectively being fitted up by the FBI. In fact, in the, one of the, the cases that it was based on, there was a, they were fitted up by the FBI and... Um, they were convicted of being involved in a plot which, it turns out, involved the conjuring of a tidal wave um, in, you know, in just kind of completely absurdist fashion. And Chris Morris's point is the absurdity of real life can only be kind of dealt with by the absurdity of comedy. So here, Marshawn Davis is Moses, who runs a community and farm project dedicated to education, martial arts and chicken farming. He believes that the great inversion is coming, which is a revolution that will, you know, invert the current uh, order, but this will be a revolution that will not be achieved using the gun weapon, because they don't believe in the gun weapon. They believe only in more traditional uh, forms of weaponry, which appear to include uh, his ability to bring down cranes with his mind and a horn, which he believes will summon dinosaurs that are being kept in secret labs by the CIA. So right. generally harmless, OK? Or what's the Douglas Adams phrase? Mostly, Mostly harmless. harmless yeah. uh, the FBI are desperate uh, to find a target, and somehow they stumble across him. Here's a clip. The waters rise, brothers and sisters. The drains back up. The basements of South Beach brim with reeking flotsam. But the city turns away, ignores the signs. Prepare ye. For the day that approaches is the day of the great inversion. On that day, the cranes of the gentrificators shall fall, and we shall overthrow the injustice of the white European. Till then, Allah enjoins us to grow strong and to prepare. Are you ready to rule? We are. As you can hear, it's an army of four. So it's basically this very small little project with some crackpot ideas, but also a sort of certain weird nobility. And what happens is that the FBI are desperate to find somebody that they can, you know, that they can uh, 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 fit up as, uh, you know, obviously a major terrorist threat. But the only way they can do it is if if the, the, the person or the group start to become a threat. So Anna Kendrick is the FBI agent who, in need of a career-boosting conviction, conspires to send somebody to offer them money and guns. They don't want guns because they don't believe in guns, they don't believe in violence, they believe in, uh, in they believe that God speaks to them through a duck. And um, But Fair on enough. the other hand, they do need money because they're about to lose the farm, it's about to be repossessed. So they enter into discussions about the money and the guns. And the FBI, oh great, fine, now we can, now we can get them because we fed them up. But actually, no, Moses isn't interested in the guns, he only wants to make fences out of them, and he also wants to turn himself into the authorities and possibly claim the reward for turning himself into the authorities, thereby stopping a crime that he wasn't going to commit anyway. So the whole thing then becomes this kind of cyclical double bluff. It was described by Morris, I think quite accurately, as a situation in which the central character is, is in a play that he doesn't realise has been scripted for him by the FBI. And as the, uh, as the plot continues, the absurdities become more and more absurd. And it is a film which is absolutely packed with, uh, with, kind, with double negatives, which include things like... Um, there's a line in which he says, so hang on, his get out of jail free card is going to jail. And there's a very sort of Doctor Strange lovey sequence in which in order to in order to prevent the announcement of a non-existent weapons of mass destruction emergency, it is first necessary to announce the weapons of mass destruction emergency and accept that it exists so that you can therefore argue that it doesn't exist. So it's, the whole thing is about this. The whole thing is about the kind of the absurd uh, circularity of it. What I think is, what I think works is at the center of it, there is a, th there is a thread of pathos and of sympathy and of empathy, which is really, really important because otherwise it would just be a kind of absurdist tragic comedy about everyone chasing their, trail, their, their, their tail and about people being stitched up. But because what you have in the figure of Moses, brilliantly played, I've said by Marshall Davis, who I think is a great, you know, really, really fine screen presence, you do have a character who, who, who with whom you you empathise, 
who, as I said, has this kind of strange nobility in the in the ideas that he believes in, which are completely crazy. But on the other hand, you know, there's something quite admirable about the fact that he has no interest in the gun weapon. He has no interest in, in violence. He just believes in these things that he believes in. Um, the other thing is that during the course of the movie, that central FBI character sort of starts to become the person who realises just how absurd and just how unjust what's going on is. And it's a film which, as it moves towards its final act, and the plot becomes completely labyrinthine and completely, com completely confused, deliberately so, but it doesn't bottle it. It doesn't uh, offer kind of happy, nice, tied up endings. And I think that's important because I think underneath it, it does have a genuine justified anger at the injustice of a world in which it is easier to create non-existent terrorists and arrest them than it is to actually track down terrorists. So I think like all of Morris's stuff, it has um, it has a point and I did laugh. Um, it doesn't have the bite or the edginess of uh, For Lions, but, but then it's, you know, and it's been quite a while since then, nor does it have that kind of incredible surreal quality of some of his TV work, if, which even if you remember when we were at the uh, Radio 1, I think he was doing the, the Blue Jam radio show was, at that yeah. point. And, uh, but I think it's, I think it's, it's very, as, as always with this stuff, it's well researched. It's so, heart is solidly in the right place. It is funny when it needs to be. I don't think it's as, I don't think it's as pithy or as pointed um, as some of his best work. But I, uh, but I broadly, app I approve of it, and I think some of it is is very funny. It's just not quite as biting as I think it needed to be. But it does have a very, very good central performance, and it does have that string of pathos, which is very important.